good evening everyone and uh, thank you very much rajendra for uh, giving me this opportunity to talk on a very important aspect of assessing and interpreting post operative wounds now this is something that all orthopedic surgeons right from the first second third month of their residency are exposed to but let's see how we should go about these things so that we don't miss on anything now more while most post operative wounds heal very well there are some that land the patient and the surgeon both in trouble and in this talk i will first talk about what is the normal healing of a post operative wound i give an acronym so that no detail is missed while assessing this wound i would highlight the need for early detection of any problems that are occurring and if a junior person is dressing a wound what should be the red flags told to him that he consults for an expert opinion i will not deal with chronic wounds and post operative dressing materials so while most wounds go well there could be blistering there could be marginal necrosis there could be sloughing there could be infection there could be uh, what we call as ssi uh, surgical site infection and maceration so although commonly believed that complications in post operative wounds are rare post operative blistering and persistent wound discharge are not uncommon if we see this timeline the first part of this slide shows in the first 15 20 minutes are the time for hemost hemostasis so it is always good to uh, apply pressure at this time so that whatever little oozing etc at the end is stopped the first 10 days is the proliferative stage where macrophages work then the fibroblasts take over to repair the wound and the collagen fibers take over to strengthen the wound so if we see this graph on the left hand side is the strength of the wound and on the bottom is the number of days from the from the time sutures have been taken so if you see here at 20 days you get about 30% of strength and by about 3 months you have about 80% of the strength in the wound now this is a, a picture where a timeline for the skin color change that occurs in a sutured wound so well initially it may be slightly red gradually it, the color goes on on becoming paler and paler or it may become dark in dark skin uh, people and usually by 9 days things should settle down but if it is it continues to remain red or the edges remain in tension either dehiscence will take place or hypertrophic scar formation will take place when we see for exudation by the fourth day there should be a in decrease in the volume of the uh, exudate which should change from sanguinous to zero sanguinous to serous which finally resolves but if the exudate persists beyond four days then one has to be very very um, uh, very very careful now if we see the wound margins and the inflammatory sign then after the fifth day wound epithelialization which should have been complete if absent or the inflammatory signs remain they do not resolve beyond 5 days it is a matter of concern and worry as there is no dead space in a normal operative surgical wound heals by primary intention there is hardly any need for new tissue formation this does not contain any granulation tissue so that stage of granulation etc goes away reepithelialization should take place within 48 hours so reality realistically speaking the wound can be left three to four days but i do not leave it open that a open wound they are always worried ki wo infection ho jayega andar wo hawa lag jayegi jeev andar chala jaye so i keep it covered and then the removal of the stitches can be done as 
for the patient's ways and the surgery that is being undertaken from seven to 10 days or even longer. The acronym I suggest has seven points to be examined. It is measure. M for you measure the length, width, and breadth. E is for the exudation. What is the quality and the quantity? A is for the appearance of the wound bed. What sort of a wound bed? Is it granulating? It is pale granulation, healthy granulation, a lot of types of granulation that, that were shown earlier on by our plastic colleagues. A very important point starts with S, surrounding skin. Are there blisters, induration, skin discoloration? And what is the local temperature? In the post-operative wound, the undermining is not a very important point. The wound edge should be seen whether it is healing or not. And re-evaluate your wound uh, with regards to all parameters regularly. If there is exudation, measure the amount of exudation and its color. Now, knowing that the complications that everyone knows, seroma, hematoma, infection, wound lesions, delayed healing, and poor scar quality, this is, an, this is a stitch abscess. This is actually not called a SSI. It's not classified under SSI because it is at a very superficial level, usually the subcutaneous level. So this is not covered. But local signs of infection would, including, would include spreading cellulitis or erythema, uh, exudate, which is purulent or hemopurulent, swelling, induration is a very important point. Local warmth, unexpected pain, um, altered uh, smell, that is malodor, etc. Now, all these things are, uh, they get covered, they are masked. If anti inflammatories are given and if antibiotics are continued for a long time. So, very vital is the concept that within 48 hours, one should stop all antibiotics and reduce the amount of anti-inflammatories given. One may resort to only analgesics for pain relief. Now, if you are seeing the exudate, you should know that there is something called a normal exudate, which is, um, which is clear, yellowish, thin, watery, odorless, hardly any bleeding, and the swelling etc. Uh, of the wound reduced with time. Now, an abnormal wound exudate would have either yellow, green, pink, or brown color. There will be more amount of blood. It would be foul swelling, a sm uh, foul smelling, and the wound becomes increasingly red and tender. So how do we manage this post-operative wound? So three Ds for that. We have dressings, drain, and debridement. And with this, always remember that whatever you are doing, counsel your patient, manage the pain, do not forget to document and take care of the comorbidities. So when to explore? This is a, this is a question of a lot of, uh, lot of debate, whereas maybe about 5, 10, 15 years back, uh, there, was a, there was a big time before exploration would be undertaken. And now, today, as we understand, earlier we explore, the better it is. So if there is a persistent ooze, there is increasing pain, there is any sign of infection. If there is a fairly large seroma or a hematoma, which may not resolve spontaneously, can get secondarily infected, one may undertake exploration. Because the brightness of necrotic and non-viable tissue, it reduces the bioburden and helps early healing. In case of doubt, always explore. So let us see one case scenario where there are blisters, darkening of the skin, edges cutting out, and edema. So we see the skin, this is a very old slide, bright, tense skin, darkening of the skin, and blisters. And seven days later, we can see that we have started getting into problems. So this was a stage when what should have been done? 
Well, the wound was intention because there was tense skin, there were blisters, there was darkening of the skin, indicating that there was diminished blood supply to that particular local area. Removing stitches early, evaluating the criticality of the wound, keeping it elevated. I don't know how much oral enzyme preparations help. And then you have to think of coverage. What about the sign of fever post op Usually in the first two to three days, the chances that they present a, a uh, SSI is low, but after 96 uh, hours, that is after the third, fourth day, one should have the antenna very high, suspe suspecting wound infection if fever persists. How about taking cultures? Uh, the role of sampling and microbiology culture is debated because you may be taking only surface bacteria initially and not the bacteria in the deeper tissues, which may give you a false positive. But even if your swab is negative, you have to interpret these results in the context of clinical signs and symptoms and not necessarily the laboratory result. The laboratory result is only giving us an idea and guides us if required what antibiotics to give. Um, I thank very much Dr. Tanna for some inputs on this slide. Uh, what do we do if there is a persistent non-infective ooze from a wound? So the question is that there is a continuous ooze that is coming and we are not we are sure it's, it doesn't look like infection. The patient does not have much pain. It is not very tender. So how we go about it? So usually in terms, in words of Dr. Tanna, he, you should shoot the physician and stop anticoagulant, goli marrows. So that is number one. Then the other thing, if the patient previously was on blood thinners preoperatively, in that situation, you could continue with having some ooze from the wound. And in such a situation, one may give a fresh frozen plasma or vitamin K. If there is fat necrosis, one may, if it doesn't resolve by itself, uh, this has to be excised and pre-sutured because the, the fat, it converts into oil and forms an irritant from where the body continuously keeps on oozing fluid. You should check the serum albumin level especially in old people and undernourished people where uh, they have not eaten well and have low protein level, in which situation intravenous albumin may be given. Patient on rheumatoid arthritis and immunosuppressive, retained gauges could be a cause of non-infective ooze initially, which then becomes infected and purulent. And finally, lymphoria. So just a two, um, so do not see the hole in the patient. See the whole patient, not just the hole. So this is a slide again, uh, Dr. Tana uh, loaned me and that shows a sponge inside the spine which gave rise to continuous push. This is what a lymphoria looks like. While it is very uh, common with the, with the head and neck uh, cancer surgeons, it's not very common with the orthopedic surgeons, but this is at about six weeks that we see in this 47-year-old, which shows a collection of lymph that has taken place. Now, what dressing instructions, uh, what instructions to the dressing person should be given? So, in case of a patient having fever, pain, induration, blisters, skin discoloration, if there is fluff or eschar, if there's too much exudate from the wound, or there is slowing of the wound healing, then they should get in touch for a senior or an expert opinion and ask them to photograph and document the wound every time. While all these people, or the dressers as we call them, they are extremely good in noting the exudate that comes and the type and the amount, but very few of them look for induration. So that is what needs to be reinforced as we go. Now, um, Dr. Chandak had requested me to put in my views on my policy of drain keeping in these patients. 
So just two slides with your permission, sir, out of the topic. Although there is insufficient evidence from RCTs to support the routine use of close suction drainage in orthopedic surgeon, and there is not enough clinical evidence demonstrating any benefit in the use of the drain, but relatives do not like blood-stained dressing. So I use it selectively in patients where I expect more than usual use <coughs> and use a retaining stitch to prevent dislodgement. So patients who are on anticoagulants where I have done any osteotomy in most of my PFN patients because these are in the hip region when they start oozing, they spoil the bed and it is very difficult to move and apply pad, bandage, change the dressing, etc. All amputations, revision joint surgeries, and when I am seeing intraoperatively that there is more uh, ooze than usual, then I use the drain. I usually remove the drain at 24 to 48 hours, and especially if the drain is less than 20 to 50 ml in 24 hours, I would tend to remove it. So to summarize, inflammation is a physiological response to wound healing. And inflammation is the pathological response when the wound healing is trouble, is in trouble. Our job is to see whether this inflammation is the normal physiology or the abnormal physiology. An astute surgeon is one who detects when to intervene early. <clears throat> if wound healing is not progressing well after five to six days, Reevaluate because by looking at the timeline, we should have a good healing in this period. One should explore early, document your wound status, and usage of the wound should be judicious. Thank you. Thank you very much.